Hi everyone, let's spend a little bit of time reviewing atoms, ions, isotopes. So here we go. Okay, so you've got a periodic table out. I'm going to do a few examples and we're going to look at some things together and hopefully this will be enough to kind of clarify anything that's not quite making sense to you. So when you have a periodic table, it probably looks something like this, maybe a little variation, but at least this gives you a place to start. So we know that this whole number right here, this whole number is known as the atomic number. So this is the thing that defines the atom, atomic number, and then that is going to tell us the number of protons because it's the proton that defines the atom also. Now, if the atom is neutral, it also will tell us the number of electrons. If the atom is not neutral, then that's an ion. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This number here is known as the average mass. So what this has done is it has taken all the different isotopes that are known about sulfur and it has added them up and then got the average based on what's more common than others. So what this tells us is that most of the atoms of sulfur have a mass number that is 32. So the mass number for most of them is 32. But then some of them are a little bit higher than that, but they're not very common, so it only brings the average up a little bit. So the most common isotope would be 32. So I'm going to say the mass number is 32 for the most common isotope. And then that's going to help us with some information. So anytime you've got that um, average mass on a periodic table, if you don't know what the actual mass number is, you can round this to the nearest whole number, so just the whole number, and then that gives you the mass number for the most common isotope. So that's an option if the mass number isn't given to you. And the reason that that's helpful is because, remember, the mass number minus the protons equals the neutrons because the definition of mass number is protons plus neutrons equals mass number. Now, the reason I wanted to review all of those things is because now you've got some information that helps you with all of the different particles in the atom. Oh, and I see that that has gotten covered up. So let me rewrite that. So mass number equals the protons plus the neutrons. Okay. So now you've got all the pieces that you need in order to figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in this sulfur atom. So we're going to say that there are, for number of protons, there are 16 because that is the number of the atomic number. Now this is a neutral atom, so there are also going to be, oops, there are also going to be 16 electrons because the positive and the negative charges need to balance out. Now, to find the neutrons, I didn't give you the mass number, so we round it off to the most common mass number, which is 32, and then that's our mass number, so we're going to take 32, let me do it over here, so 32 minus the 16 protons will also give us 16 neutrons. Now in this case, all three of them happen to be the same. That won't always be the case, so don't assume that that is something that's always going to happen. It just happened to be this case because the mass number was 32. If the mass number had been 33, if I had given it to you, then that would have been, of course, a different number of just the neutrons. Okay, so that kind of summarizes some of those other things. Now let's go ahead and do a few more examples. So let me get to some free space here. Let's take a look at this one. Silver, the atomic number is 47. This is the average mass, but it could tell me that the most common mass number is 108. So let's take a look at this for silver. So silver has 47 protons and that comes from the atomic number. So the atomic number is the same as the protons. Because there's no charge on this, then there's also going to be 47 electrons. That's just kind of part of the definition of atomic number, when there's no charge, plus and minus balance out. Now, because it doesn't give me the mass number, I'm going to get the most common mass number by rounding this. So I'm going to say that the mass number for this particular most common silver is 108. And then I can use the mass number to find the neutrons because mass number, by definition, mass number minus the protons equals the neutrons. So the mass number of 108 minus the 47 protons equals, and you don't have to worry about it. If you can't do that math in your head, just use a calculator. So I've got 108 minus 47 equals 61. So then there are 61 
neutrons. So then now I would know a little bit about what this atom would look like. So what I would do then is I would draw my nucleus, so I could have my nucleus here, so 47 protons and my 61 neutrons, so there's my nucleus. And then what I would do is I would draw lots and lots of electrons, and I'm not going to do the right number right now, but you would draw 47 electrons to get them all to make that electron cloud. So then that's what that atom would really look like. So protons and neutrons go in the center, and there should be 47 of these. Again, I'm not... I'm not going to take that whole time to do 47, but you can see what that would look like. It would create this electron cloud around the nucleus. So that's just another version of examples. So that's atoms. So if just a neutral atom, positives and negatives canceling out, using the most common mass number to find neutrons going that way. All right, now... That's not my only option, of course. So some other things that happen. Now let's review a little bit about ions. So let's pretend that we've got different versions of our atom. It's not just the normal atom anymore. Let's say, for example, let's do that same thing, but let's say that it was silver, and this silver happened to have a plus one charge. Well, remember that positive charge happened because you have less electrons. And because the electrons are negative, you got rid of something negative, so now you're going to be positive. So what we do is we look at what silver normally has. So silver normally has 47 protons. That's never going to change because if it changed, it wouldn't be silver anymore. So it's for sure got 47 protons. Now normally it would also have the 47 electrons, but this tells us it doesn't have 47 because then it would be neutral. It is positive, which means less electrons than normal, so then instead it has 46 electrons. Because look, now there's a little bit more positive than negative because there's 47 protons and only 46 electrons. So then now this is why the whole, the whole thing has a plus one charge. All right, let's do that same thing, but let's pretend it was, I don't know, how about selenium? Let's say selenium and it had a negative two charge. So then what we would do is we would find selenium on the periodic table and we find out that it is, I'm picking an element I don't have right in front of me, so selenium happens to be number, atomic number, sorry, I had to go look at the periodic table. It's atomic number 41. So atomic number 41, all right? If it's atomic number 41, that means it automatically has 41 protons. That's the definition of this atom. That's why it's called the atomic number, 41 protons. Now, negative two, so let's review here. So negative means you have more electrons because the electrons are negative. So if you have more electrons, you'll become more negative. So what this means is that normally there would be 41 electrons for selenium, but because it's more negative, there's more electrons. So not 41, but two more. So now there's gonna be 43 electrons. So because there's less positives than negative pieces, the electrons are more negative, And so that gives it overall a negative two charge. So this is our review for ions. So charges, this is what I mean by if it's not neutral. If it has a plus like this or a minus like this, you figure out how many it normally would have and then either you take away if it's positive or add. But the only thing that changes are the electrons. So only change electrons. That's really important because that is what makes it an ion. So the ion only changes the electrons. Everything else you would do like normal. And then to figure out the neutrons, that wouldn't change. It would be the same thing before. All right, so atoms is when you're just really looking at the normal information from the periodic table. You can use the average mass if needed to figure out the most common mass number to figure out the neutrons. Or the other thing is that I want to talk about isotopes. So isotopes happen when you change the number of neutrons. So we're going to say that this only changes the neutrons. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that too. So when you have an isotope, everything else is exactly the same. So let's take a look at this. So let's do carbon-13. So carbon-13 means what happened is it's still carbon, so that doesn't change. So nothing is different about that. So let's say carbon-13. Carbon always has an atomic number of six. That won't ever change, which means that there are six protons, because that's by definition. 
This carbon-13 doesn't have a charge. This is not a negative. This is the mass number, remember. So when I give you an isotope symbol, the mass number is the thing that's given to you. All right, so I've got six protons. I also have six electrons because it's neutral. But then now I don't have to do the rounding thing from the periodic table because I gave you the mass number in the symbol. So carbon dash 13. So the mass number is 13 minus the six protons equals seven neutrons. So this is different than the most common one because the most common one, this would be 12. So then we say there's seven neutrons. So then to draw that, you would put your six protons in the middle. You would put your seven neutrons in the middle. That's your nucleus. And then you'd put six electrons around the outside to make your electron cloud. So that's what that picture would look like. So carbon-13. So for isotope, all we did differently was we changed the number of neutrons. And remember, there's two ways to do isotope symbols. One looks like this. The other one looks like the symbol for the element. So in this case, C for carbon. And then the mass number goes up here. So in order to figure this out, so this had to be given to you to know that it was an isotope. If that number was not given to you, you would just round the average mass on the periodic table. So in this case, this would round to 9. That would be the mass number of the most common one. This would round to 131. That's the most common one for xenon. And with that, hopefully that's enough of a little bit of review to practice ions, isotopes, and atoms. Thanks for listening. Bye.